a lot about about this. You do a lot of coursework. So what do you have to say first about, about the Lemba and what makes them unique as opposed to some of the other groups that are considered lost tribes? Correct. Uh, Lemba are fascinatingly unique because we could trace them directly to the oldest Jewish exile community in the world from Yemen. And the, Yem the Yemenite Jewish community, when they came back to Israel, they had customs that were preserved for 2,000 years uninterrupted. Even some of their pronunciation of Hebrew letters were unique as far as how the Ashkenazim and Sephardim pronounced their letters, but no one challenged them saying it's unauthentic. It was as authentic it can get. Mm -hmm. And so when you see the Lemba all the way down to the bottom of Africa, you know, tracing their roots uh, to the Yemenite Jewish community, building in the same structures and having certain uh, you know, traditions that are the same, and no, like no one else in South Africa, it shows you the far-reaching scale of these Israelite uh, customs and mm -hmm. traditions. And not to mention, obviously, we speak about the genetic Kohen phenomenon amongst the Lemba people, that uh, a large percentage of them have a genetic marker to be from the Kohanim, from the priests of Israel. Tell us more about your work and the coursework that you're doing, because you are a real advocate for, for this topic and why it's so important in the times we're living in. I appreciate it. I think the most important thing is like the if so, so what? So we've established that there are these individuals over here, but the next question is, what do we do about it? Mm -hmm. Is everyone supposed to convert and come back to Israel? But if we think that way, there's really 100 million people around the world that have this Israelite identity coming from the tribes, and Israel's you know smaller than the size of New Jersey. Is it sustainable to think in the way of having to convert and bring back? And if you look at the Lemba, they don't even want to convert. They say, why are we converting to something we're already part of? So it's really important now to bring in the writings of our sages, because we have a consensus for about 3,000 years passed on that everyone agrees on what will happen in the future times when this great awakening happens. And from my perspective, it doesn't seem like it's going to be a religious phenomenon and a conversion and a mass immigration to Israel, but it's going to be some type of change that happens in the world when people unite. Right. When we realize. So when we're talking about the Isaiahs and the whole in-gathering that we've all these years taken quite literally, it, it kind of... In the, in the bigger picture, it is part of that process, even in the identifying and recognizing and feeling Correct. the kinship well, to the Jewish customs. In-gathering is a great question, because there is an in-gathering, and we're obviously experiencing it now being in Jerusalem, having this, uh, being in Israel, I live in Jerusalem, having this mm -hmm. conversation, but there's a 2,000-year-old argument from the sages of Israel, the Mishnah, do they return or do they not return? And Rabbi Akiva says they don't return to Israel, or they don't return, and Rabbi Lezer says they do return. And any time you see this type of argument, it's really never an argument. We just have to have context for what each one's talking about. So we believe, according to the opinion of Rabbi Akiva, who says they don't return, he means to say geographically. According to the opinion of Rabbi Eliezer, who says they do return, he means to the consciousness and to the community, and we do unite and lock arms in the future. Mm -hmm. So there's no contradiction over here. So now we have a, a huge opportunity to make something out of 100 million people minimally who want to be part of this world peace phenomenon that we've been praying for for thousands of years. So how do we also help educate people that are also looking to connect but there's comments like, well, you guys are imposters, you're not the real Jewish people, and then you're kind of getting people on the other end of the, the extreme. So how do we bring it all together that everybody is on the same page? Yeah, there's a few things. One is, you know, they always say haters are going to hate. So I've kept my, my line, you know, tunnel vision mm -hmm. and ignored most of the hate for the whole entire time. But I have learned to be sensitive to the haters because a hater sometimes is someone in the schoolyard who's not invited to play with all the other kids and they feel like they're on the side, which causes psychological... Like Kanye West. Correct. Type. It causes psychological resentment when you're not on the inside of something going on. Whether or not that, that thing is good or not, you're going to view it as bad because you're not invited into it. Mm -hmm. So there has to be a responsible way that we create a welcoming way that everyone could at least feel part of something that's has nothing to do with conversion or the right of return. And so this is what iTribe is, something I've been working on for 12 years, is basically being able to scale um, the access of technology and freedom that Israel provides to nations around the world, most uh, specifically into Afghanistan, where you have like 25 million Pashtun, and into Nigeria, where you have 40 million Igbo. These are humans who are saying, we've been under war and corruption for thousands of years. Please, like we see what's going on in Israel, 
come to us also. Bring us some electricity and clean water systems and some uh, governance structure. And here we are in Israel, and the whole world's looking at us for this light and this help, and we're fighting each other on these minute things and honking at each other in traffic. Yeah. So when like the Jewish, this morning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When the Jewish people wake up and realize the redemption's knocking at our doorstep, I think we'll have our own spiritual uh, revival also. Because what I've seen also, uh, being an educator in reform schools and conservative schools and the Orthodox and the ultra-Orthodox and the Hasidim and to Christians and all the world, everyone gets a spiritual uh, feeling from this concept of the tribes waking up and uniting. It speaks to everyone because I think this is what's gonna, what it is, what we've been waiting for. Which is the messianic era that everybody right. is talking about, so we, even with the bad stuff happening as well. Right. So when we synchronize with like the times and what's actually going on and we like leave the clouded vision of our own lives and our own ego, I think we'll just get this natural spiritual influx that the prophecies are coming true. In front of our very eyes. Rabbi Harry, thank you very much as always. Yes.